Greetings and welcome to our overview of Google Earth. Google Earth is a very sophisticated geographic browser that allows you to navigate the Earth. Today we're going to be looking at just the basics, how to get the program and how to navigate its user interface. Let's get started. Let's begin by describing how to get Google Earth. Go to the web address www.google.com slash earth and you will come to the web page you see before you now. In the upper right of that page there is a download Google Earth button. Go ahead and click that button and notice that there uh, is a version of Google Earth for your operating system whether it be Windows, Mac OS X or Linux. All three versions are available. On this page also notice these check boxes at the top. Uh, one of them uh, specifies to include Google Chrome, uh, the browser, as part of the download. The other is to make Google Chrome your default browser. If you don't want that to happen, clear that check but button. If you don't want Google Chrome at all, clear the other check button. Okay. There's a license agreement here. You should read through that and if you agree to it, click the Agree and Download button. And you'll get a dialog box that looks like this. Uh, you'll save the file, then you'll double click that saved file to install the program. Okay, that's all there is to it. Let's take a quick look at the user interface in Google Earth. First of all, at the top of the screen, there's a toolbar. Uh, these icons at the top of the screen allow us to do many sophisticated things with Google Earth. Uh, the push pin allows us to set a place marker for a place we wish to revisit in Google Earth. Uh, the little clock allows us to examine historical imagery uh, in the satellite imagery that we're viewing in Google Earth. The sun icon allows us to set the time of day uh, so that the sunlight on the imagery that we're looking at is accurate and so on. There are various very sophisticated tools up there. On the left of the screen there are three panels. The search panel, the places panel, and the layers panel. Uh, first of all, the search panel allows us to search for any place on Earth and Google Earth will fly us to that location. You can enter the name of a country, name of a city, Buffalo, New York, uh, enter a street address and it will fly us directly to that street address. We can even uh, go into what's called street view in this program and see what the buildings look like and the street looks like. Uh, we can also enter geographic names up here like Mount St. Helens and or Mount Fuji and we'll fly directly to that location. Or if we know the latitude and longitude of the location we can enter those and it will fly directly there also. In the places panel we can store locations that we visit. If there is a place marker at a location or a series of place markers in what's called a KML file, we can store those in the My Places area and they become a permanent part of the program so that they load each time the program loads and we can revisit uh, those, those locations. Otherwise, any location we visit is stored in the temporary places area and is discarded after the program is closed. The real action in Google Earth occurs on the Layers panel. The Layers panel allows us to turn on various layers, that is transparent layers, that overlay the satellite imagery in Google Earth. Okay, the big central area of our uh, Google Earth program shows the Earth and we can zoom down into it and to do that we use the controls at the upper right of the program. The top control called the Look Joystick allows us to spin the map, spin the satellite imagery that we're looking at. Okay, If we're off a north on top aspect, we click the N to return north to the top. It's just a convention and it's the same as if we were moving our head around and viewing things. The second joystick here allows us to actually move around right and left, forward, backward as we navigate the Earth. And this third control allows us to zoom in and zoom out of the Earth. We can slide in, see more and more detail as we slide in, slide out. 
or use the controls at the end to gradually slide in and slide out like that. When we get very close to a location, here we are, uh, Pegman will appear and Pegman when we click it will show major streets and as we get closer to Earth show more detailed streets and we can drag Pegman drop him somewhere on a street and we'll enter street view wherever we have dropped him. You see you can navigate right down to street view and see what the imagery looks like on the street and navigate that and then exit street view with a control on the upper right of your screen. The shortcut for navigating out, that is zooming out, is to double right click the screen and we will zoom out in units. The shortcut for zooming in is to double click the screen and we will zoom in. You see the closer we get uh, to the uh, surface of the earth the more detail we see. If I were to clear the roads layer the names of all those streets would disappear and when I turn it back on they reappear. We can tell what altitude we're at by the at the lower right of the screen where the altitude is indicated. Okay, I'm going to zoom way out now. Stop about there. And uh, there's one more control for navigation and that is the tilt. You can hold down the shift key on the keyboard, the left mouse key, and pull the mouse towards you to tilt the horizon up, back, and spin around in any, any direction we wish. Or you can use this if your mouse has a, uh, has a scroll button in the middle, just hold it down and drag the mouse around to tilt the horizon. Okay, that's a quick view of the user interface of Google Earth. Thank you for watching our Introduction to Google Earth, how to obtain it, and the basics of how to navigate the program and how the user interface is laid out. You'll find it's a program with many depths to it as we explore it over the next few weeks. Thanks for watching.